Geology, geology, geology. Welcome everybody to the mini geology show. Here we are again. This is Daniel Minizini, your inquisitive geologist, today with Francesco Gerali. Francesco Gerali is in Italy. He is a manager for the history research in a museum close to Rome. The name is called Museo dell'Energia di Ripi. Uh, Ripi is a small town in central Italy, in the region Lazio, and it belongs to the network of the Italian museums. Francesco is there uh, coordinating the uh, history research, uh, and we're going to talk with him about the importance of the museums of hydrocarbon or the museums of oil and gas. Uh, Francesco, welcome again to the Mini Geology Show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. My pleasure to be here with you again, uh, Austin, your show. Francesco, I know you are writing about the museums of hydrocarbon or the so-called petroleum museums uh, all over the world. And you visit some in person, some virtually, some just on paper, 182 museums. 182 museums all around the world. Let us know what do you find in common in these 182 museums uh, of hydrocarbon? Well, uh, in line of principle, uh, petroleum museums uh, are uh, permanent, no profit institutions uh, focused on the oil and gas sector. They are at the service of the community and its cultural growth. In line of principle, every petroleum museum in the world uh, acquire, preserve, research, communicate, uh, and exhibit the surviving material evidence of the petroleum industry from the 1850 to the 2000s. What's the purpose? The purpose is uh, of studying uh, uh, and learning from the industrial archaeology, cultural anthropology, and the history of the petroleum industry. That may be from a very local, uh, regional, national, and even global, international perspective. I would say that these museums, they are in the countries that they produce and export. Is that correct? Well, uh, I found out that uh, not every country with a significant uh, petroleum past uh, undertook a cultural uh, educational policy aimed at the preservation and the transmission of the memory of the national industry. Examples are uh, energy capitals, the so-called energy capitals. Uh, the energy capital Tampico, the state of Tamaulipas in Mexico. And for example, the other energy capital Perth in Western Australia, Australia. In those cities, no museum or historic site has been built or uh, dedicated. Uh, to create a continuity with the past, uh, some countries choose to reuse or recycle former, let's say, oil and gas spaces. What it, uh, about the 182 museums that um, you mentioned? How many of those have you visited personally? Okay, visited personally, probably not more than a dozen. Uh, they are very scattered, and, uh, except for Africa, in all the continents. How did you visit I, the ones that you you couldn't go because they were like too far away? Well, the existing uh, literature produced by those uh, museums. For example, there are museums uh, very active, uh, very devoted uh, to produce uh, documents uh, like the Petroleum Museum uh, in Petroban in France. Uh, and um, like uh, the Museum of Eats in Germany, and it's possible to find a plenty, a plenty of material uh, from the museums uh, in Canada, in the United States. Also the museum from 
Iran is a very important producer of literature. If you ask me, Francesco, did you find uh, there is assisting a, a manual, uh, a white book, uh, an handbook of uh, petroleum museums in the world? No, not at all. It was very difficult actually to make, uh, build uh, this list of 182 museums. It costed probably one, almost one year of research. Mainly research done uh, online, uh, mainly research done uh, with uh, oral questioning from other historians uh, or uh, very helpful, um, helpful my uh, colleagues from the International Council of Museum, uh, ICOM. Uh, very did you, why did you start um, putting together a list of all the museums around the world? What was your intent? <clears throat> My line of principle uh, started uh, as a personal interest because uh, many of the websites of the museums uh, offer uh, uh, documents uh, in PDF uh, that you can download uh, and study more uh, na the cases of the national histories uh, or uh, regional history. I started uh, to take care of that in a more professional way when uh, in 2018 uh, I was asked uh, by Rajul Sorkadi, the, the chief editor of the Springer Encyclopedia on uh, Petroleum Engineering. He asked me if I could prepare something on petroleum museums. So, Francesco, in these uh, museums all around the world, um, do they have the same uh, message that they deliver to the visitor? The message can be something uh, focused on uh, something very local or regional or national. Very few museums, uh, they go international. But uh, let me say that uh, I found uh, other elements uh, to frame the museums. There are 182 are a lot and are very different. There's no a, a prototype, not, there's not a style. I identified, for example, I decided to uh, divide some uh, museums uh, depending uh, uh, by the main subject that can be oil and gas or just gas or oil shale or bitumen or even just refined products and retail. You can uh, divide also museum depending by their space, their surface availability. Many of them may offer just uh, indoor spaces, other outdoor spaces, and uh, the welfare museums, uh, they can offer a exhibit that includes a real park of the memory with the industrial archaeology artifacts. And then I say that about the 60% of the structure I could analyze, they have uh, both indoor and external uh, exhibition space. Another important aspect, uh, uh, we have to consider the management and administration. They can be owned privately by a trust uh, organization. They can be run by a national or a reg government or a regional uh, administration. There are the company museums and uh, also like in a sample a very interesting case uh, in uh, in Canada there are they may be family owned uh, old uh, family with an old oil uh, tradition the Fairbank uh, family there is they have the Fairbank Petroleum Museum in Ontario and they really preserve uh, one and more than 160 years of uh, machineries uh, and uh, story. Another aspect, 
I would like to frame other two aspects and then uh, I, I'll jump to the other question. Other aspects are the, let's say, educational features. I mean, some museums have uh, resources to keep open, uh, let's say, interactive uh, learning labs and uh, educational uh, program, programs. For example, the, the Energy Museum in Ripi, it's uh, so far the only one uh, in Italy uh, with special labs uh, that they are very useful for uh, for students for middle school and uh, high, high school. Uh, there are a few museums that can be considered a structure of excellence, both for researchers and students, because they host, this is very important, their own library and uh, their own archive uh, with uh, run by professional personnel. And this is, for example, the case uh, of one of the most famous petroleum museums in the world, the Drake Well Museum uh, in Well City. Pennsylvania, and still in Pennsylvania, special mention goes to the Barbara Morgan uh, Harvey Center, uh, because uh, it cannot be considered a museum per se, but it preserves and makes available uh, to the white public a unique archival fund uh, to that can document really very well uh, the history of Western Pennsylvania early petroleum industry. I just wanted to add if you like the last uh, aspect is the geographical context of interest. Museum main subject, main subject mostly uh, regards the, risk, the history of the petroleum heritage uh, of a specific region, the specific region in which is built local, other as a wider national scope and the focus on the country-wide petroleum efforts and achievement. Many others uh, have a more international, let's say, cut. They can deal with artifacts and topics uh, aimed to communicate, to transmit to the public a general view of the petroleum industry in the world. So these are the five categories, the five elements to frame the museum, that, the museums that I found. What is the role of the petroleum museums uh, in the energy transition according to your vast knowledge uh, in the reading and studying of these 182 museums around the world? Their role. Uh, I know principal uh, petroleum history museum has the, the mission to, to tell, to narrate history of petroleum, the past of petroleum. So if you ask me what about the current exhibits uh, talking about, uh, <coughs> showing about uh, petroleum and transition, my answer would be no one. How we could really involve our 182 museum in a wider narrative, uh, in a wider global relevance, and include them, connect them with the energy transition. There is a, it's difficult to call it a project because it's not a project, there is a concept, an idea that started to shape about a little bit more than 10 years ago, uh, especially in the continental Europe, uh, Germany, I remember something very important, of the global museum. The concept of a global museum is a very roughly, uh, to take uh, the thing, the object, the artifact from a country, select other related objects, things, and create a system of objects of things on the same topic and put them together virtually. 
in the old world, that means 30 years ago, if you want to organize a universal uh, exhibition, every director museum uh, has to find an agreement with another director, uh, decide the venue, insurance, uh, transport, and whatever. Now, the power of the digital communication would allow the network of uh, museum, uh, museums in Texas, your state, the two museums uh, that are in Germany, uh, the two museums uh, in Poland, uh, the museums in Iran, uh, the petroleum museum uh, in Hokkaido, uh, the island of Hokkaido in Japan, and organize in the virtual space a real global exhibition. From every museum, the, the curator or the local historian uh, can write a piece to explain the artifacts uh, or, the, or, the, or the, the windows that they are, they are showing. It's possible to create a podcast. It's possible to create short documentaries. Uh, it's possible to create a, a, I don't know, a virtual assistant, a virtual character. Uh, I don't know, a, a lady called the Petrolia, <laughs> uh, showing you the several virtual rooms. You can compare the different rooms. It will be very, very interesting to find the cooperation uh, of all the 182 curators, volunteers, administrators of these museums, uh, and uh, make every one of them uh, write a piece, build an encyclopedia of the petroleum industry museums, uh, and organize with a lot of funds, a lot of funds, uh, the Petroleum Museum's global project. <laughs> that would be a dream. Uh, so, Francesco, is this just an idea, uh, or there's uh, somebody that is working to, to realize? No, this? this is just an idea right now about myself, about uh, this, uh, what we are talking about, uh, this uh, Petroleum uh, Museum. I know that uh, uh, currently is in development. Uh, uh, they fired up uh, the idea, and there is a consistent project uh, at the I Trapoli History Center. The global situation with uh, the pandemic uh, should have been a very good uh, platform to, to try to realize it as everybody would have been very open to collaborate. So in my small, uh, humble opinion, uh, uh, in terms of education and the diffusion of education, the pandemic just, just uh, um, allowed us to understand and to boost the potential of digital communication technology. I didn't mention something very important, uh, that uh, I saw when I was at the University of Oklahoma, the Digital Scholarship Center, uh, I saw the benefits uh, of uh, virtual reality. There's a magnificent potential in virtual reality for education, not just for entertainment. Going back to the, to the museums and your um, research, uh... Who are the visitors of these museums, the real museums? Uh, the visitors uh, so far uh, I found uh, can be literally everyone. The museum uh, can be visited uh, <coughs> by class from school. 
de energia, um câmbio de visita de um Sunday by the family, a uh, tour, a trip in that specific region. The museum can be visited, uh, special case, those museums with the libraries and archives, can be visited by researchers, can be visited uh, by master candidates, PhD candidates, uh, looking to deepen their, uh, their subject. I also found in the past an interesting case uh, of uh, some petroleum geologists invited by the, some investors to go to look uh, to the old <coughs> papers, to the old, uh, let's say, allow me this expression, petroleum cartography, uh, stratigraphic uh, sections and whatever from the past, uh, to take a look uh, to those uh, 100 years old documents uh, and to merge those uh, with the new mapping, with the current mapping. What are the other uh, disciplines uh, that they are present in these museums? Yeah, basically, uh, you can find museums, uh, we said, focused on geology, yes. There are also uh, oil geology museum. There is an example in Russia, uh, the oil geology museum in the uh, faculty of the geosciences. Uh, you can find uh, many museums focused uh, on, uh, on drilling. So we, we, can, we could say petroleum engineering. There are museums that display uh, uh, things that we can call uh, midstream. There are museums, uh, special museum, I remember the museum, the offshore museum in Galveston, but unique in the world. There are museums also explaining, uh, showing, uh, there is one in Italy and one in France, uh, the retail. Uh, what is uh, the everything you can call memorabilia about the petrol uh, petrol station in the United States? Uh, there are a few wonderful examples of uh, petrol station from the 40s, from the 60s, perfectly conserved, not more in use, obviously, but perfectly preserved. That basically uh, you can visit a small museum. The, the petroleum, the petrol station is the museum itself. Uh, wh who can be the visitor of this uh, tiny but unique museum? The tracker traveling, uh, I don't know, from, uh, let's say, from Utah to Minnesota, stopping by in the next diner, uh, having a sandwich, can visit this wonderful uh, example of. Anyway, all of these museums, um, do you have to pay a ticket? Some of them, uh, yes, others are for free. But I would uh, suggest, uh, really, I would suggest, uh, <coughs> sorry, to every visitor, everyone who is going to visit a museum, if they don't ask for the ticket, please leave a donation, please or buy as much as you can at the gift shop because uh, the economical situation in generally the economical situation of the petroleum museum uh, is uh, is not good sometimes exactly. museums so can you uh, expand on the budgets uh, uh, they are containing the museums in the who is funding them, even though I understand that you said that some are private, some are owned by the state. Uh, do you know anything about the budget? About the budget? Uh, museum, basically, is a, first of everything, a building, is a space on the public soil, so has to pay taxes, has to pay bills, most of the time has to pay rent. And uh, the most valuable capital uh, of museum is the human capital. Because most of the museum are uh, run by volunteers. 
there are museums uh, that are backed by a foundation, maybe a local foundation or a, a regional state entity. Some museums, for example, have the board of the trustees that can manage the budget. Uh, other museum, uh, like some museums in Latin America, where the <coughs> petroleum industry is a national thing. If I remember, if I remember well in Bolivia, in Peru, uh, this, the same state-owned oil company provides for everything. And the people working in the museum is in the same payroll of the other people working in, uh, I don't know, uh, exploration and production. What is a benchmark uh, among all of these museums that you have analyzed? What is the one that you would say could represent a benchmark uh, for the others to look at and try to be like that? Every country has its own national petroleum industry, characterized by internal and external factors, can be social, economical, political. And the museum reflects the unicity of the meaning of the petroleum activity in that country. It was very difficult for me to try to frame, uh, indeed, uh, I'm honest with you, I, I didn't find the general model. Uh, it will be different. It will be different. Uh, and in any case, uh, say that one can be a, mar a benchmark for another. No, I'm not comfortable to say that. But I, I can conclude uh, mentioning two cases in terms of originality. There is, uh, and I look forward to to visit both of them. There are two uh, rail, choo -choo, two rails uh, <coughs> routes into the, uh, or the small oil region in Pennsylvania and if I remember well in southern uh, Poland. You can take a small train and have this uh, rail tour in the oil areas and is amazing. They are very original. And another one is uh, uh, the total virtual museum of the Neft company. That sometimes is difficult to visit because they still use the Adobe Flash uh, plugin that is not more supported by nor Google uh, nor uh, Internet Explorer. But they realize the wonderful virtual museum, not a global museum, careful, it was nothing of a step. But uh, they use the virtual, uh, very interactive interface uh, that uh, I tried one time. And here I have two screens. Uh, the large one is uh, 24 inches. Uh, I tried uh, all the lights off. Uh, and uh, wow. It was a, a virtual intense uh, experience. So Francesco, the study um, of these museums, they show the past since the 1850. What are the years when they stop showing things because they are so close to us that they don't belong to the past uh, yet? Static, uh, very simple. Uh, uh, small museums like a petrol station uh, remains in the 40s and 50s. There are uh, museums uh, that they present, uh, especially in the external outdoor parks, uh, the same artifacts used, utilized until the end of the operations in that region. That can be the 60s, 1960s, 1970s. Uh, we have, for example, museums uh, devoted almost to the contemporaneity. I mean, for example, the, the museum, the Petroleum Museum in Norway, is, you know, the, the, North, uh, the North Sea petroleum industry is uh, relatively young. 
much developed at the, the end of the, of the 50s. And they still uh, present things uh, in the early 2000s. So most of the time, uh, uh, it is uh, a displaying uh, of artifacts from the 19th century, but uh, for an industry, like uh, an industry I remember you know pretty well uh, from Argentina. In Argentina, in the Petroleum Museum of Argentina, uh, you find a lot of things uh, built uh, in the 1910s, uh, moving until the 1970s, 1980s, if I remember well. What would you like the museums, the Petroleum Museums, to improve? I would love uh, they can improve uh, uh, their capacity to attract the interest of uh, possible new donors. I would like that they will be they will be put in the condition to express for their potential. Many times uh, the display and the preservation of many artifacts, many times it's difficult for the museums to manage the external spaces because they require maintenance. Many times it's difficult for the, for the Petroleum Museum to open because there is a lack of personnel of uh, volunteers. And it would be nice, for example, to, to find the donors uh, uh, willing to finance uh, the history department of the local uh, college uh, or the cultural studies and uh, pay, for example, uh, an internship or uh, pay a graduate assistantship uh, working uh, in, the, in the museum, developing a project in the museum. It would be nice uh, for many museums uh, to have the possibility to rely on uh, an historian or an archivist uh, paid uh, to keep track of the many, many papers, great quantities of documents uh, that are uh, wasted in some uh, box uh, down in the basement. Uh, last, uh, what I would like they can improve, uh, their uh, capacity to uh, attract the local communities and not only the local communities. Because uh, a, a so-called oil region, uh, no better than me, Daniel, an oil region, it's not a town. It's not an area of few square kilometers. An oil region, it means that in the past, uh, hundreds, probably thousands of people, directly and indirectly, they could uh, work, develop families, uh, build infrastructure, thanks to the petroleum business. So this is also, at, at large, it will be an interesting uh, uh, mission acknowledge in the historical times how much the industry, the old fashioned industry, contributed to the community to be a community. I wonder why the, the, the oil companies, uh, that they are certainly large budgets, they do not help in this regard. Maybe because they don't think the petroleum museums are so important? Some petroleum museums, especially in Europe, uh, they came after the conclusion of the industry in that specific area. And the company or the companies that were running that industry uh, dissolved. So in the beginning, there was the possibility to get some finance, but uh, dissolved the company no more funds available. And uh, let's make the case of uh, Italy. We have ENI. Why ENI is not sponsoring uh, the three existing museums? 
because he and I prefers, and I agree in some extent, uh, uh, to keep alive the ENI uh, archive and documentation center uh, in Pomezia, close by to Roma. It is an important structure that directly involves the documentation, the wealth of uh, almost 100 years of documentation of ENI. In France, we have the same total. Uh, so far, I remember total, there are uh, three museum entities in France, uh, and total doesn't finance none of them, but total has probably the most advanced uh, archives information systems uh, where uh, French historians uh, can find uh, professional uh, librarians and professional archivists uh, to keep uh, the flame of the company history up. Museums should have to do, uh, it, I think uh, we, are, we are trying, I hope we are trying to give a, to be, give a good example. Uh, at the Energy Museum uh, of Ripi, we started to produce uh, some uh, scholarship uh, articles, uh, whatever, uh, and then we got funds. We got funds from the region Lethia, and we could produce uh, produce uh, three small uh, documentaries on the history of petroleum. I provided for them the, the test and all the all the images. Now we are building, uh, I hope we can launch it uh, next a few weeks, uh, the Petroleum History Library, the PHL, Petroleum History Library, to attract money to produce contents. You need the first to show that uh, you are capable to produce contents. We are in conversation with Francesco Gerali, who is managing the history uh, research at the museum uh, in uh, the little city of Ripi, Museo dell'Energia di Ripi, founded in 2009 in central Italy, close to Roma. And uh, Francesco, would you like to uh, say anything uh, before concluding this other episode of uh, Mini Geology? Just uh, that even this time has been a very, very great pleasure to have the opportunity to talk at your show, Daniel. Uh, thanks for the space you, you give to Petroleum uh, History Discipline uh, in your, uh, your show. Thanks. That was another episode of Mini Geology. This is Daniel Minigini, your inquisitive geologist. You can follow this uh, interview, like many others, at minigeology.com. Write at minigeology at gmail.com to be in touch, to propose other interviews, other topics, and stay well. Bye.